Interesting. All right, one of our light bulbs around the building just popped. I heard it. So when the lights go to come back on, one of them's not going to work. All right, we got zombies just right up in our yard. Don't love to see it. Yeah, like, earlier on, you know, the to-do list was like, find the generator magazine, locate a generator, get to the other side of Ekron, kill them all. But at this point, our base is basically stable. We don't particularly have much worry about food or water or anything like that. Look, man, I'm way stronger than I was killing you all. I got, like, the 500 kills or barefoot or um, bare hands as my main weapon. Yeah. Yeah. I did not anticipate the helicopter setting us back that hard. I mean, that's fine. Like, we're still we're still moving and making good progress towards our actual objective of wiping out the zombies. Just not in the way I thought we were. Um, so let's check everything here. The strawberries aren't going to produce by the time this is over. I feel like that broccoli isn't going to be grown. None of that's going to grow. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that we got our last... Like, we'll get probably the uh, the cabbage and the broccoli, but the rest of that's probably not going to grow before um, winter rolls in. Let's check our generator, make sure it's in good shape still. It's fine. I'm listening for my wife to get home so that I can uh, run down and figure out what her dinner plans are for tonight. Because I don't really plan too much in advance, and I need to probably change that with the streaming. Because uh, there are uh, four days a week that she gets home midway through the stream. And then figuring out dinner becomes complicated. Nope. I mean, she games occasionally, but uh, she doesn't stream. Like, she used to game a lot. Nowadays, she just kind of does the... Um, destroy the world in Minecraft where you just kind of level out the entire planet. Uh, she has hopped on a couple of times. She hopped on um, Project Zomboid and we streamed together. Because, you know, Chad's like, oh, you know, you should get your wife to play as well. And I was like, this is not the kind of game she'd be into, but, you know, I'll ask. And, like, she was like, I'd give it a go. I'm like, alright. Heck yeah. You know, sure, let's do it. Worst case, you just don't have fun and we, you know, we don't do it again. But we've done, um, I think three streams now? We did multiplayer? Yep. I mean, it's been tough with the current situation. You want to go out and do a whole bunch of stuff, but, you know, also be responsible. Oh, and for those who don't know, spears in this game absolutely demolish, but their durability is such incredible crap that until you get decent maintenance skill, they're very difficult to use. 
But once you do get enough, you can just delete zombies with them. They're not like Gatana strong, but they're pretty, pretty strong. Because, like, I'm only at spear rank 2, and, you know. You can just drop zombies. And I'm partly trying to still push, even though I know it's getting dark, because we've got a um, storm coming in game really soon. And usually when it's super nasty and stormy outside, it's best just to lay low, because you can't hear or see well. Um, if you mean games that came out in 2021, uh, I would have to think of what's even in that list. I do know the games I have been playing is, like, Project Zomboid and RimWorld are certainly up there. Um, I very much enjoyed doing the other day where we played Timberborn. Like, T Timberborn was absolutely charming. Um, for the record of those who don't know what that is, it is a post-apocalyptic city-building game with sentient beavers. So, um... You know, we'll just we'll just start with that premise and let you uh, let you go from there. But the thing that's so neat is like it it follows a lot of city builder tropes. You know, you need food, you need water, you gotta you know manage your people and resources, that kind of stuff. But like, you know, a lot of games, yeah, water's important. But in this game, water is exceedingly important. You have to you know dam up the water manipulate how the water moves around and we're like most of those kind of games the um the cycle is prep for winter survive the winter prep for winter survive the winter this one it's prep for the drought survive the drought prep for the drought survive the drought but yeah yeah and um long claw was one of the people like there's a good there's a good like I'd say four or five people who last Wednesday were like, no, 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 there's this game Timberborn on your other games day, you really need to play it. And then described it, and like, that sounds absolutely absurd. Um, I want it. And picked it up, and I'm actually... I'm actually debating playing it this Thursday. Like, it didn't perform well on stream. Like, I, I will be honest, it is not... Twitch has no love for the game. I'll, I'll leave it at that. And that's just the way it is with some games. Like, I, I enjoyed playing Oxygen Not Included on the stream the one time, but or two times, I think. Two or three times. But, uh... Yeah, that... That game had negligible viewership. Like, Oxygen Not Included... I mean, both Timberborn and Oxygen Not Included, when I streamed them, I was the number one English stream for the game, mostly because there was just no one else streaming them of any amount. Yeah, I do I do wish there was more of an audience for it, because I've mentioned a number of times, like, I want, I want to find time to play that game, because I want to mess around with the water more. Like, I stayed up way too late playing that game, because I'm like, look, I want to, I want to do this big, grandiose project with this water, and I'm, like, 90% of the way there, and I will not sleep until it is done. Oh yeah, no, it was, it was not like sun coming up late, but we weren't getting too far, and that's definitely not something I need to do. Because I also knew with the numbers, I'm like, I, I realistically am not streaming this again for a very long time. And because I stream every night, like, finding time for games I don't stream is very limited. And I, and I do need to figure that out. Like, I do need to make adjustments to my schedule. It's just, unfortunately, with the way streaming is, you almost have to commit to being on a decent number of hours and consistently.
Okay. Oh, this is a spear I found. Like, I know there are people who, because Spears is one of the disputed meta games, that they will go out of their way to just work on their carpentry and go do all that to make really good spears as fast as they can. Um, I have crafted spears in this character, but we're talking like four. So like, I haven't at any point like gone out of my way to craft it. Strictly early game when, you know, my maintenance skill is crap, so I had to use any weapon I could get my hands on. And then even then I had to craft a few just to make ends meet. Because it takes like tape in that to put stuff on them. And just generally I want to save my tape for like repairing machetes. Yeah, I pro- like, I should forge more. Like, that's just plain and simple, I should forge more. It's just early foraging is kind of annoying. Oh yeah, same here. And then the other question is, when it comes to, um... Foraging for tape, it's like, how often do you find tape? Do you find it, like, regularity, or is it just kind of... kind of rare? I was expecting... okay, there's a group of zombies. And then pretty soon we're probably gonna turn back so we can read the next book I need to read. But, um, we are getting pretty close to the edge of town anyways. Notice that that zombie, I didn't actually intend to run into them, but it was like, oh, she's already in the way, so I immediately started just running. You will push, like, a zombie or two out of the way if you run at them. You just have to be really careful, because after, like, two, three zombies, you have a high chance of tripping. And if you trip into zombies, you get where this is going. Your run-ins is how it goes.
Oh, let's say when you push, you know you have an aggro on a zombie still if you're using a short blade. And I was just trying to figure out where the zombie was that we still had aggro on. Okay. Yep, no, I agree. It's just my comment from earlier. Oh, we're getting low on water, too. Like, I, I normally, just because of how hard it is to find tape, I'll use tape on machetes and stuff like that. Or, like, a uh, garden fork. I generally wouldn't wouldn't spend it on um putting a hunting knife on the end of a on the end of a spear like even though that is solid like the amount of damage you can do I just generally find getting a machete back into working order to be a better use of tape for me personally Okay, so I'm going to pause just, again. Just uh, wife is trying to cook some dinner, and I just want to give her a two-second hand with it, so it wasn't just her doing it. You know, gotta be fair. But she jumped on it because she figured I either lost track of time or couldn't get away or whatever. And it's just I try to help. She works second shift, so what ends up happening is um. You know, she works 410, so she gets home after a long day of work. So I always try to have dinner ready for her in those days. Just don't have anything handy that I can cook that isn't a huge... Like, a huge step away from the time at a stream. I shouldn't say huge. More than is a reasonable amount of time step away. Because generally speaking... Like, I don't remember it's like terms of service, but generally speaking, Twitch says if you're going to be away for like more than 10 minutes, you should really stop your stream. Um, and that's kind of, like, it's not, I don't think it's like a hard, fast rule or anything. But, yeah, and that's, and that's to be fair, because people are also going to, you know, who are tuned are, are going to be pretty unhappy and going to go someplace else if you're just not even at your stream for long periods of time. So I also try and limit myself to not taking more than five minutes away unless I really don't have a choice. Which has happened. We've we've had where I'll quickly try and make something and then the doorbell ring with like you know, a delivery or something that's held us up. See, to do that I have to get a cat. Or a dog or some some adorable creature to put on the camera. And like, I used to be a pet owner, you know, and nothing, nothing like sad or tragic or anything with it, just... A lot of animals that we keep as pets, we live longer than they do. And then just after going through them, like, you know, I... I don't want to do it again, like, I liked the good part of it. But the saying goodbye part of it was not so much fun. Like, one thing I've debated is getting my 3D printer back up and running. Like, it's, it's fine, it just... I haven't used it in a while, so it's been sitting. And I've debated at some point, just like, uh, you know, starting to get some 3D prints going for people, like, because you, you can effectively pay, like, have people pay you to 3D print stuff for it. And then just going, all right, well, I'll make that available or start printing stuff, and I could do that. It's just, like, have the 3D printer going. And I could do it, like, a point redemption thing to turn on a camera for the 3D printer. Or like when I go AFK, like have it go AFK, but in the corner you'd have like the 3D printer, like a small picture-in-picture -picture kind of thing. 
That's it. I gotta actually do like a test print on it and see even what kind of shape it's in because it's been a while. Yeah, that's where mine is. Like, I used to do tons of 3D printing, but it's just... Like, for as much fun as 3D printing is, those machines get pretty fickle. And they do need a lot of TLC to keep them in good working order. So you're quite constantly making, like, small adjustments to, oh, I need to adjust the temperature a little bit, or I need to do this a little bit, to keep the printing right. It's, it's a machine. It wears out. Like all other mechanical things, it wears out. And so, taking all that time to, you know, poke and tweak and adjust and keep it working right is a pretty significant time investment. It looks like a uh, baseball helmet. Can't quite make it out. Either baseball or football. It's like you tip his head back so you can see if it's just the one. Oh no, that's like a motorcycle helmet. Okay. I'm gonna take it because I haven't seen that motorcycle helmet before. I've just seen like the solid color ones. Okay, and the reason I'm backing out is it's late. I'm going to have my character read the book. They're not tired yet. I'm going to have to read this other book, get that out of the way. All that good stuff. Yeah, no, I um, I did a bunch of, like, random knickknacks. Like, I've got um, the, uh, was it Elite Guard from Dark Souls I 3D printed. I've got a, um, it's a pangolin that articulates so you can, like, move it so it's like a thing just because it was neat. Um, I made some companion cubes because those are pretty pretty awesome where I actually 3d printed different color plastic for the different parts of it Like I gave those to a few people I worked with and all that who were like I knew were big into portal Let's put the helmet over here. Grab the axe as a replacement main weapon. Sit in the corner. Well, actually, let's just go to sleep. I'll save the book. <laughs> <laughs> 